It's James with Net News Ledger. We're talking politics 2.0. We're at Lakehead University in the ATEC building. If you're wondering what the scenery in the background is on a very wet, rainy Thanksgiving day, we're here with Laurie Paris. Laurie, thanks for coming in. Thanks, James. We're getting into the home stretch of the election campaign. What are you so at the doors, yeah. what are you hearing? I'm hearing they want a clean slate. Uh, I'm hearing they're worried about crime. I'm hearing they're very, uh, they're very concerned about downtown Fort William and how the, the revitalization of it has not come about and they don't see any effort being put into it. Uh, yeah, I'm hearing they're concerned for their city and I'm hearing that uh, they don't believe that the incumbents uh, that are now in City Hall have been uh, doing enough to uh, change these things. You were door knocking in the Limbrick neighborhood the other day and you said people were not answering their doors. What does that tell you? Um, they're scared. Uh, I, I, I came away very sad. I went by myself. Uh, it was rainy. It was, uh, I was having a hard time getting um, some supporters to come out with me. And I thought to myself, I grew up in uh, housing such as Limbrick. Uh, I'm not frightened. Uh, I saw all the lights were on. Uh, a few families opened the doors to me and spoke, spoke about their concerns. They were really surprised to see me at their door. Um, I watched the kids play in the park. It was just very noticeable that this community needs attention. Now, in the city, we've got um, a number of areas. One of the areas people have talked about is the revitalization of the downtown Fort William core. And you've been fighting in downtown Fort William to get things improved. What do you see happening and what can you see happening? What would happen if you were the councillor at large? Well, first of all, you have to realize that uh, the Fort William BIA is, uh, has funds that come from the city of Thunder Bay, and it also comes from the property owners of downtown Fort William, about 40 or 50 of them. There's $120,000 that can be used for beautification and driving business, uh, to the business, driving business to the doors of the business owners of downtown Fort William. In the last year, uh, with those funds, uh, we've seen nothing. Uh, they've piggybacked on a couple of city initiatives, but there was nothing that was driven by the Fort William BIA, uh, by, by that board. Uh, we've tried to complain, uh, but when you go to City Hall, uh, the city clerk's office just uh, rallies the troops around them. And they're very well protected. There are three city councillors sitting on the Fort William BIA uh, by some quirk. Two are appointed, and one is a, a business owner who's, who's uh, just there as a business owner. The Waterfront BIA just got an award. They did 27 events last year in downtown Port Arthur because they had a board who was engaged and were willing to put the hours in that were necessary to continue to have a beautiful and vibrant downtown. So they're not dropping the ball. We saw a bit of a pickup in downtown Fort William a couple of years ago and the ball was dropped. Uh, they didn't continue to uh, invest in the neighborhood. They, they you know, caused some distress when they wouldn't listen to their members. And instead of keeping a cohesive uh, membership and, a, and a, an association, it was split. And now it's in, in shambles. Uh, there's no reason. And, and I will say that uh, the Waterfront BIA has almost the same budget to spend as uh, for downtown Fort William. So there needs to be change at City Hall. What got you to run? You're a business owner, you're busy all day long with work. What would possess you to want to sit on City Council? Well, I'm passionate about this city. I've been in this city for quite a while. I've opened several businesses. I've been an employer. Um, to tell you the truth, part of it was what we ran up against with trying to uh, get the Fort William BIA and the three city councillors who sit on it to sit up and take notice. Uh, they were not understanding their own um, bylaws. They were not understanding the Municipal Act. They were not understanding the needs. And then to, to bring this to it, the attention of the city clerk's office and be shut down. So I thought to myself, something's got to change there. Along with how I feel about how entrepreneurs are treated when they go to City Hall to be able to uh, open a business, to invest in the city, to uh, bring jobs and wealth to the city. Um, they're mistreated to some degree. There's no programs or incentives, incentives for them. There's a, uh, 
a long path of following the rules and jumping through hoops, too much red tape. I, I understand that there's rules that, ha that have to be followed, but not to the degree and then with the attitude that uh, entrepreneurs, small business people receive when they, they knock on that door. Now, looking at some of the key issues in the city, you, we've touched on crime. What message should, should City Council be sending out to youth in our city and Indigenous youth in our city? Oh, we're here to take care of you. We're here to listen. We're here to help. We're here to engage. Um, we, we, we have a huge gap in what City Council believes the Indigenous community needs and what they truly need. There's no trust there. And in order for them to trust and start talking, there needs to be people in City Hall, in City Council, that they feel they can trust. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our readers and viewers? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, with this community. There's a lot of positive things that are happening, but there's also many things for many years that have been going on that just need to end. Racism, um, you know, supporting our police, our frontline uh, rescue, uh, EMS, uh, paramedics. We need to partner in business with the indigenous communities. There are strong leaders in that community. Um, we have to stop looking at them as somehow we have the answers for them. They have their own answers. Uh, you know, we have to build this economy. The ring of fire is just taking too long. And I understand there's concerns about that, but my main concern is if you're going to, going to build the ring of fire, the First Nation communities have to be sitting at that table and be getting a fair and equitable return for their investment. Uh, I just want to thank all my supporters, thank the City of Thunder Bay for always supporting my businesses and for giving me an opportunity to run for Councillor at Large. Laurie, thanks for coming in. Oh, you're welcome, James.